What's up everybody, Hazeblade here, and today we're going to be making this video to address some of the questions and concerns that the mod community of Resident Evil 2 Remake have been getting about why runs are being rejected. So hopefully this video will provide a little bit of insight if your run has been rejected or if you're a newer runner and you want to make sure that it doesn't happen. Uh, so we'll be going over quality standards, we'll be going over, you know, fairness of runs and trying to see, um, you know, to make sure that the rules are followed, set forth by each category. And overall, just making sure that that submission process is fair for everyone. So uh, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of different videos of some accepted runs and show you what we look for and uh, also give you some tips and tricks on how to make sure that you've got your quality standards up to snuff. So the first thing that I want to refer you guys to is that if you're on the SRC page, which we are right here, if you click view rules in the top right section of any category, it will not only give you the game rules for the entire game on the left tab, but the right tab gives you the rules that are specific to that category. So uh, in the case of Leon A standard here, it's got all of the things related to not being able to use infinite nano ammo weapons and duplication weapon items, so on and so forth, as well as the need to cap your frame rate. So we're going to get into some of this stuff as we get into detail. However, uh, just to let you know, uh, we do check each run against the rules to make sure that they are of course submitted properly so uh, the first thing that we're always going to be looking at is the scenario character and difficulty selection so if you're running leon standard 120 or if you're on console running leon hardcore the first thing that we check whenever we look into a run is that you're actually selecting the category for the run that you're running and immediately following that we fast forward all the way to the results screen to make sure that that run is finished if you're submitting on PC, during that time, we're also gonna look and make sure that the FPS counter, whether you're running either 60, 120, or in some cases like any percent variable, making sure that the FPS counter is shown and is set per the category's rules. We're also checking the VOD to make sure that it is a permanent VOD. So if you're just submitting your stream VOD, um, that's going to expire in 45 days. Unfortunately, that's not an acceptable submission because once that video is gone, we no longer have the evidence. So. Uh, make sure that you cut the VOD and also make sure that it's cut tightly without any excess runs. So I've seen it before where somebody will have a 20 minute run that dies in RPD2 and then that's part of their submission. We don't take excess submissions. Now, if it's a 30 second you know, run, it's, it's one thing. But if we're talking minutes of gameplay, that's, that's subject to a reject. So make sure your VODs are trimmed tightly with just the run in question that's eligible for submission. The next thing that we can check along this process as well is to ensure that you don't have any mods enabled. So the most notable ones are the X gonna give it to you audio track. Uh, we also look at reskins, which are banned. So you can't you know, put Mr. X in a diaper or anything like that. Um, it has to be the skins that were included with the initial purchase of the game. Uh, we're also looking at quality standard. Now we don't have, you know, per the SRC rules, we don't have a specific quality standard that we follow. But generally speaking, your video should be at least 360p and all of the text should be visible if I'm watching it in three or if any of our mods are watching it in 360p. So when you're in the menus, we should be able to read what it says in the menus. If you're running on PC, we should be able to very clearly see that you're running on 60 or 120 FPS and that it's not going over that threshold in the event that you don't have your frame rate capped. Next thing I want to talk about is audio, because audio is equally, if not more important than the video. And when we look at audio, the biggest things that we're looking for is, do you have copyrighted music? Is the audio distorted or choppy? Or is it just missing altogether? So make sure that your audio is synchronized. If it's off by a very small margin, we tend to be a little bit lenient, but I would say if it's any more than about a second or so, your run's most likely gonna get rejected. So make sure that you review your runs, make sure that your audio doesn't get muted for any sort of reason throughout the, the duration of your run. The other part of audio that we look at is your commentary. And I cannot stress enough that if you're somebody that uses a microphone, which, you know, as a streamer, that's highly encouraged, um, make sure that your commentary is clean. Now, profanity and stuff like that is fine, but anything that you feel like would violate the terms of service for any video platform, whether that be YouTube, SRC, Twitch, Mixer, uh, any of the video platforms, if you're in violation of that, it's subject to a reject. So if you're having overly sexualized content, if you are um, talking poorly about another content creator, anything like that that's against terms of service, that's a reject. And we do listen for commentary. So please make sure that your commentary is clean and appropriate. Again, profan profanity is fine. It's TOS violations that we're looking for. 
Um, so the next thing is, you know, th those are kind of the quick reject things that we look for. So the next step is we actually are going to dive into the run. And that's when we're going to be checking to, you know, try to see if there's any potential for, you know, possibly if anybody macroed, uh, any major glitches, unless, of course, you're running in any percent, which major glitches are allowed. Uh, lost video. So if it skips two or three seconds of video, which if you are doing PS4 runs, the PlayStation 4 is notorious for cutting out video. So please, please make sure if you are speed running on PS4 and using the DVR built in that you review your recordings prior to submitting. We catch them way more often than you might think. We do miss them sometimes and we'll get into that a little bit later, but um, we do catch them more often than not. So please make sure that you check your recording from PS4. And if it's consistently cutting out on you, I highly advise that you find a laptop or if you already have a, a computer at home, for a very affordable price, you can get a capture card that will work perfectly with your PS4 and you won't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, we'll talk about more of that in just a couple seconds, but video loss is another one that we look for. Um, now, some other quick tips and tricks before we actually go into a couple of runs and, and show you what we're doing. Uh, I do have a couple of recommendations for you guys, and this is just something that kind of gives us a sigh of relief whenever we look at runs um, because we're showing or we're able to see that creators are putting forth the effort to show legitimacy in their run. So a couple things that we look for. So the SRT, which is the speed running tool, you can actually find a download for that. I believe it is over here on the forum. Uh, it is made by our good friend Squirrelies. Um, and basically what that does is if you're running on PC, it will show you the DA, it'll show you your inventory, it'll show you enemy health. Um, that's one of the things that we highly encourage you to put in your overlay. Um, so that way we can make sure that, uh, you know, you're basically not locking and making enemies invincible or yourself invincible and stuff like that. So that's one that we highly recommend. Um, we also recommend Live Split, which Cursed Toast, uh, which you'll also see right here, has the auto splitter for Live Split, which allows you again on PC. You can have picking up items in the game automatically perform the splits for you, makes things a little bit easier. If you're on console, you can use Live Split if you're hooking up via capture card. Unfortunately, it won't be an auto split, but again, another way to keep track of your runs. Uh, other ways that you can help establish legitimacy on PC, which you'll see when we check out Tradees run later, is keystroke displays and keyboard cameras. Um, that actually pretty much, if there's any question about you using a macro, we can pretty much uh, confirm that you're not using a macro if we just see your hands on a keyboard or the keystroke display uh, via the program for that. So um, some other recommendations. You know, again, as a streamer or a YouTuber or whatever, having a microphone is always recommended. Um, another thing that we kind of listen for is do we actually hear the keys clacking? So, you know, for example, with runners on PC, we can kind of hear the, we can kind of hear those, those clacking of keys and it makes it much, much easier to identify that sort of thing when, uh, when we can actually hear it. So microphone is always recommended. And again, I cannot stress enough, if you guys are on PS4 and having issues with your DVR cutting out, for right around 100 to 120 US dollars, you can get an Elgato HD60S, which plugs in via USB to a laptop. You can stream from your laptop, and it is incredibly easy to get high quality video that is essentially lossless without having to worry about missing two to three seconds of video. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at a couple of runs, and I'm gonna show you uh, some great examples. We're gonna be looking at Orchlon and Tradee's videos of their sub 49 minutes Claire A standard 120 runs. And I'm just gonna show you guys what a great example of a submission looks like and uh, and kind of just set that example for you guys so you know what to strive for in terms of quality. So <clears throat> to start, I'm going to show you guys Trady's run. And right off the bat, we can see that he has not only a keyboard camera showing his inputs, but he also has a program that shows the, the actual keystrokes as well. So again, as I mentioned before, uh, having a keystroke display and a keyboard cam, those are highly recommended. So that way, again, if there's any question, especially if you're submitting world record times on PC, this is a great way for us to be able to really authenticate the legitimacy and, and make sure that you're not using macros and things like that. So uh, again, I'm gonna go through this process. So we're gonna start with the scenario, character and difficulty selection. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the volume down on this. So he's very clearly selecting Claire A standard. He's got 120 FPS in the top left corner. And once we've got the difficulty selection done, the very next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to the end of the run and I'm going to make sure that there is a results screen here. As moderators, 
there's already right now as of this week resident Evil 2 remake is the number one speed game on speedrun.com so we have a lot of runs to go through actually if i just go out of full screen we have 45 runs and we just cleared out this queue a few days ago and we're already back at 45 runs so we have a lot of runs to go through and there's only a handful of us mods so watching a video that is near an hour long just to find out that the results screen wasn't at the end is a colossal waste of time so it's very very important uh that you make sure that this section is in your vod so that is the very next thing that we look at after we see difficulty selection and uh another thing for those of you that submit on youtube that's very important is some people at the end of the runs and i do this too and i actually have to manually go in and make sure that it doesn't block it when you get your result screen if you do the end screens on your youtube videos that recommends other content it usually puts these squares up here with other videos make sure that your results screen time is not blocked by those cards for it, you know at, at least if you're going to have this result screen up for let's say 20 seconds at the end of your run and you're going to have a 10 second end screen just make sure that you can still at least for a few seconds see this end screen time otherwise your run will be invalidated I, I will not have a way to validate runs if i don't have a way to close that down now youtube used to do it where you could disable that we don't have a way to disable that anymore and i, I the process of having to download runs the moderators are not willing to take a time the time to manually download runs just to get around the recommended content feed that is again with the amount of runs that we get it's just not possible you guys are responsible for doing your part to make sure that that stuff is legible and and easy for us to access so again now once we've got this we're going to go back to the beginning of the run and we're going to watch them start to finish now i could if i wanted to i could kind of click through different sections and make sure that you know this would be a really easy example that if i wanted to make sure that there wasn't any sort of you know mods being used for skins or anything i can just pretty much click anywhere in the run and see that but I'm also going to see that at the beginning of the run too. So what we would do is we would start back from the beginning with the difficulty selection and all that right here. And we're going to watch the run. So again, we're looking at quality standards, right? So can I read the 120 FPS? Yes. Can I read the text that's on the screen? Now, again, Trey uses a lot of different overlay features to really kind of establish legitimacy with these runs. So, um, you know, he's using SRT, he's using uh, live split and uh, as well as that keyboard cam and the input display, like I mentioned before. Um, and then you can also, in addition to that, you can also hear the keystrokes through his microphone as well. So now if I turn my background music off here and I listen, we can also hear that he has in-game audio. It sounds clean, it's clear, it's not desynchronized, it's not distorted or anything like that. Now, some things that you guys should know about when we watch these runs is that especially and this this happens more frequently when our queue is as long as it is now uh, we do watch every single run from start to finish but sometimes uh, especially with times that aren't competitive time so we're talking like you know pretty much anything that's really not in the top 10 uh, we may watch those at accelerated speeds so through youtube sometimes you know we may select playback speed and go anywhere from one and a quarter to two x just depending on how many how backed up we are um, and we do generally watch the record pace and the competitive run times with much more scrutiny. So therefore, we won't we won't necessarily watch them at accelerated. But um, again, that helps us save time, and we can still even watching at two x, we can still more often than not catch things like you know lost video and distorted audio. Pretty much all the things that you would expect us to catch, we can still catch that watching at two x. So um, you know, again, if this were not a record pace run we'd be probably watching it at about this pace now you'll notice that sometimes when we watch it at 2x sometimes it will kind of skip around like this but we can still hear the game audio and it's not being disrupted by watching it at 2x so that's another thing that if you are submitting on like ps4 or xbox and you do lose a couple of frames but the audio is still there your run won't get rejected for that your run will get rejected if there's a very clear cut where there's just video missing and you immediately go from you know opening a door in one room to being halfway through that room or in the next room because all of that is just totally gone so that's just an example of you know a case where we may watch something at a little bit faster speed um, in order to get through these runs um, to make sure that your runs get verified at a reasonable time um, if it's especially backed up you know once our queues start getting into you know the upper you know range potentially reaching upwards of about 100 sometimes we may also watch them at accelerated speeds but we might also be watching multiple runs at once so for example uh, it's not uncommon for me to snap these two windows side by side 
Um, and usually this happens with the same category. Uh, when I do it, I usually try to stick to the same category. That way I can evaluate them consistently. But it's not uncommon for me to pull two runs that are the same category, throw them both at 2x speed, and have them race each other and be going back and forth, uh, making sure that the audio and the video is, okay, you, is lossless. So that's just an example there. So... Um, again, watching this run from start to finish. Um, and in the context of this video today, we aren't going to watch the entire run because um, I do want this video to be relatively short. But just keep in mind that every mod's process is different. But generally speaking, if we do have a queue that is getting extensive to where we can't verify runs in a reasonable time frame, uh, occasionally we do watch runs at accelerated speeds. And like I said, 99.999% of the time, we're still going to catch the same stuff. We are human. Odds are we'd still, you know, miss a mistake even if we were watching runs at normal speed because we're just humans, right? So um, it does happen sometimes where we miss stuff, and we'll talk about that again a little bit later. But um, as far as priority and order and things like that goes, we don't really have a set order as far as which runs get verified first or anything like that. But what I can tell you, generally speaking, is that if it's a world record time, if it's a ghost survivors run or like a hunk and tofu, which are really short runs, they do tend to get verified earlier than others, just due to the fact that it's it's one of those things where if I'm sitting down getting ready for my stream, I can verify a hunk run, you know, while I'm brewing coffee. You know what I mean? So it, it really just depends. Um, but there isn't a particular order. So whether you submitted your run three days ago or whether you submitted it today, there isn't a specific order as far as when and how they get verified. But uh, we do tend if it's a shorter run or if it's a world record run for a main category those those will tend to get a little bit more priority depending on the circumstances so uh, but on a normal day it's pretty much just whatever we have time for sometimes we even pick them at random if there's three runs or three mods verifying runs at the same time sometimes we'll you know kind of hey i'll take the top section somebody else take the middle and somebody else take the bottom um just so that we were not stepping on each other's toes so it really it really really just depends guys so um, as far as that goes, I mean, this is pretty much what we would do. We would watch this run from start to finish. Um, you know, occasionally we'll review boss fights and just make sure that, you know, somebody doesn't grab an infinite knife in a standard run or rocket launcher. And, you know, with knife only, we'll double check and make sure that when, you know, the alligator is showing up that they're using the grenade instead of the pistol and that they don't use the rocket launcher and the zombies before the end. So we do look at those things, but we would generally just watch this run from start to finish and look at the sections that might be questionable so you know puzzles that have a fixed solution like the keypad puzzle um and the uh dispersal cartridge puzzles in the labs and the power puzzles in rpd2 we we do look at those especially with record pace runs to make sure that they are being performed legitimately and uh pretty much going through that process so um that's pretty much it as far as the process goes so you know once we finally get to the end of a run um, you know, using kind of Orchelon and Trey's runs again as examples here. And I'll kind of, as as he's finishing as, as Trey's at the end of this run, I'll kind of show you again with Orch this process. Uh, again, we're looking for the difficulty selection, which there it is there. We have 120 FPS in the top left corner. And then we've got a result screen at the end. Once the video loads, of course, sometimes and this is this is sometimes why why we're not able to watch runs at accelerated speed is because sometimes, especially with high quality video that has a high bit rate, sometimes we're not actually able to. Um, we're not actually able to watch multiple runs at a time. So like I said, it's very con contextual. But um, so again, we have a result screen. So again, we would go back to the beginning, watch it, check the audio. You know, scrutinize puzzles, things like that, and make sure that they are legitimate. So. Uh, but finally, I do want to say, if your run is rejected, please, please, please do not take it personally. Um, I speak, I think, on behalf of all of the mods when I say that we are all on the same page. We have a very close level of communication in the mod Discord that we use. And uh, whenever we have a question about anything that, that might be kind of gray area, case-by-case -case basis situation, we always discuss it as a mod team before we make a decision. So... Uh, again, please do not take it personally. We always will include feedback in your rejection. So please make sure you read the feedback, internalize the feedback, know what you need to do better the next time. And we highly encourage you to resubmit 
uh, this community is absolutely amazing. And if it weren't for the effort that all of us have put in, not just the mods, but also the runners as well, uh, we wouldn't be number one on SRC right now, which is really, really cool. So thank you guys for that. Um, but just make sure you implement that feedback and then resubmit again when you have a run that complies with the rules. Um, and then, you know, kind of in closing there, um, there again, there are very, very rare cases where sometimes we do make a mistake. Uh, we are human. So if there is something that we miss and you happen to be going through the boards and you catch something that's questionable, send it in a private message to one of the mods. You can actually, if you just click on my name uh, or any of the mods names here, um, it'll take you to their profile and you can click send message right here and send a private message right through uh, right through SRC. So uh, highly encourage you guys to do that and we will be happy to look into it. And if there's a mistake that we made, we'll be happy to correct it. So um, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this video though. Um, that's just kind of, again, to give you a, a very good example of what we look for uh, in runs. And if you guys had any questions uh, as to why your run got rejected and maybe it wasn't covered entirely in the feedback, this pretty much covers, I think, every reject that I've been through in the last two months that I've been a mod. So um, if there's anything else that comes up, uh, I may leave it in the comments. Or like I said, if you guys have any questions, you, please feel free um, to stop by my stream, twitch.tv slash Hazeblade. Send me a private message on Discord or SRC. I'm more than happy to answer any of your guys' questions related to speedruns because my commitment to you guys as a moderator is to make sure that we grow this community and that we treat every single runner with the utmost respect and fairness between runs. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.